Greetings and welcome back. This is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have a very cool Enigro. It's this modified Gaussian-like Enigro from from the 2024 MIT Integration B semifinals. It's the Enigro from zero to infinity of e to the negative x squared divided by x squared plus one half squared dx. And the approach to solving it would be to convert it into a double Enigro using a nice integral representation of the number 1 by k squared. Now, how exactly do I convert this into an integral? That's not a big deal whatsoever. So you can do this for 1 by k to the n as well. And the trick is to take an integral, that is the integral from 0 to infinity, of t times e to the negative k times t dt. And all it takes is one substitution that is letting k times t, that is the argument of the exponential function, equal to another variable, let's call it u. So this implies that dt equals du by k. So that means we have the integral from 0 to infinity of u by k times e to the negative u du by k, giving us 1 by k squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of u times e to the negative u du. And this integral here, after some integration by parts, evaluates out to 1. So that means we have 1 by k squared equal to the original integral here, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of t times e to the negative k times t dt. And in our case, we have k equal to x squared plus 1 half squared. Rather, we could simplify this just a bit more. The target integral i is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared divided by x squared plus 1 half squared dx. So simplifying the denominator, that gives us the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx divided by 2x squared plus 1 divided by 4. And of course, we could expand using 4, thereby giving us 2x squared plus 1 in the denominator, and we now have 4 times this integral. So for the case of our target integral, we have k being equal to 2x... Wait, this thing is squared as well. So we have 2x squared plus 1. Okay, cool. Now for the fancy multivariable calculus stuff. We have the target integral i being written as four times the integral, terribly sorry about that, four times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x squared times now instead of this one by two x squared plus one squared term, we have the integral from zero to, zero to infinity of t times e to the negative t times two x squared plus one dt dx. And of course, this term here is independent of the t variable, so we can take it inside the integration operator. And we have four times, now the double integral, from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared times t times e to the negative 2x squared t minus t on multiplying the terms and the argument of the exponential function. Now, what we can do here is arrange or move move things around in the integrand so that we have t terms together and e to the negative x squared terms together as well. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Math is simply a lot more simple than plain English. At least in terms of, you know, trying to tell someone what I'm trying to do with an integral. So we have t times e to the negative t from this term here and we have e to the negative 2x squared t minus x squared, and we can factor out the negative x squared term, leaving us with 1 plus 2 times t, dt dx. And now immediately we see a utility in switching up the integration operators, which is something that's completely valid in our case because we have these exponential terms in t and x acting as damping factors over the region of integration, so we know that this thing converges. Okay, cool. So we can switch up the order of the integration operators here. So we have four times the double integral from zero to infinity of t times e to the negative t times e to the negative x squared times one plus two times t 
dt uh, dx dt now. So first we're integrating with respect to x and then t. So that means this term here, which is independent of the x variable, can be taken outside the integration with respect to x operator, and we have four times the integral from zero to infinity of t times e to the negative t times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x squared times one plus two times t dx dt. Now this thing over here is actually a Gaussian integral, and we know that the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative alpha x squared dx equals one half of root pi by alpha. And in our case, we just have alpha equal to one plus two times t. Okay, cool. So all of that means the target integral i is now four times the integral from zero to infinity of t times e to the negative t times root pi by, no, root pi by that thing, and we also have a factor of one half. So it's four times root pi by two cancellation happening. And in the denominator, we're left with root one plus two times t dt. Okay, cool. So how exactly do we solve this new integral we have? Well, I'm going to need this factor of 2 now inside the integrand, and we have root pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times 2 times t, and I'm going to expand by 0 here by adding and subtracting 1. And the reason for that is that we have root 1 plus 2 times t in the denominator, so that means I can write this as root pi times the integral from 0 to infinity, of e to the negative t times one plus two times t minus e to the negative t, and we have this common denominator of root one plus two times t dt. And that means one over, uh, no wait, something over root something is just root something, right? Unless that something is zero. So we have integral zero to infinity e to the negative t times root 1 plus 2 times t, and we should factor back, yeah, just factor out the, the e to the negative t term, and this is what we have left. Okay, cool, but now what? Notice something here that this term here, we can get that by differentiating this term. So what do we do here? Introduce a parameter and differentiate under the integral sign, Oh, I don't know, man. We just need integration by parts, and everything just plays out quite nicely. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I write this as root pi times using the linearity of the integration operator, we have integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative t times root 1 plus 2 times t minus integral 0 to infinity e to the negative t times root 1 plus the reciprocal of root 1 plus 2t, that is, dt, and I forgot the differential element over here. Okay, cool. So on this integral here, we apply integration by parts. So on IBP, we have, what exactly? We'll integrate e to the negative t, giving us e to the negative t with a negative sign, and we have root 1 plus 2 times t, limits being 0 and infinity and we have minus uh, plus sign now, integral 0 to infinity, e to the negative t, divided by root 1 plus 2 times t, factor of 1 half because of the power rule, and factor of 2 because of the chain rule, which cancel out quite nicely, and we see that this would cancel out exactly with the integral above, and all we have to do is evaluate this thing in the limits as t tends to infinity and 0. So for t going to zero, rather first for t going to infinity, we have the entire term collapsing to zero because of the exponential term. And for t going to zero, we have e to the zero, which is one, and we have a negative sign as well, which cancels out. So we have root one times root pi outside. So that means we have i equal to root pi, Okay, so this was just a Gaussian hiding in disguise. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram. And in case you like the channel, do consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.